quick one today, but one that, that often gets people tripped up, and that's going to be how to prevent duplicates in a table. Let's say we have a, a table in our uh, Xano database. We're going to click on uh, here and just going to do, we can call it dupe uh, check. Um, and I'm going to, the starter template is actually not a really great idea. I recommend uh, always telling it to never create tables, or never create those endpoints for you. Uh, but we'll we'll leave that be for the moment. Uh, so let's just say that I want to have something that's going to be, I don't know, connect my users um, and allow them to pick, say, tags, right? And so uh, I'm going to have a tag. Uh, and for, you know, each uh, user is allowed to have one and only one tag. So if I were to pick a user, um, you know, I can say, I'm going to say, uh, rob me. Okay. And I'll say the tag of alpha, right? And I'm allowed to have someone else say, James, have a tag of alpha, right? And we want Ray, uh, to be able to also have a tag of beta, right? But we would like to prevent Ray, uh, from also having a tag of alpha, right? We want to say, this is basically the situation we want to avoid. Uh, so we're looking to, to prevent duplicates based on the intersect of multiple fields. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can go about this problem. Um, the first, and, and probably the easiest way to do this, if this is something that's true in terms of constraining your table, is to create what's called a unique index. So over here, you can see there's this little, I'm not sure why they use like a, a gauge for indexes, but they do. And you can click where it says indexes and we can create a new index and we can say the type is going to be unique. And this is important. Um, it's going to be a unique index on user ID and we click on add field and we also say on tag. So when we do that, that will make it so that this table will only be able to have one record per. So if I were to add a new record, and I were to say uh, Ray, and I were to say Alpha, it'll say, no, duplicate record detected. Please check your input and try again. And that's because it's just not allowed. So I'm going to go kill this guy. Confirm. Um, we're, let's just for the sake of argument say there's something called tag2, which does not have a unique index on it. And sometimes you have to refresh in order to get to show the right stuff. Xano uses WebSockets under the covers. That can be a little bit finicky. Um, so I'm going to say text and tag two, save. Great. And that makes sure I've got the new column. Perfect. And now we're going to say this is equal to beta. Or you know what? I will just say this is equal to gamma. And this is going to be equal to gamma. And this is going to be equal to eta, right? And we're going to just say that we don't want to allow Ray to have a second gamma. Now, keep in mind that in the case of tag, it would have allowed this. But if I were to say this right now in the table, we're not enforcing it at the table level. Maybe there's a reason you're not enforcing it. Maybe it's because your data might be a little bit dirty. You want to keep it from getting any dirtier or something. But, you know, that would create a situation where I can say gamma, right? And Ray gamma and Ray gamma are allowed at the table level. But we would like to stop it at, like, the business logic level because we don't want to have to control it at the table level. Okay, so having done solution number one, which is the unique index, let's do solution number two, which is we're going to uh, have an endpoint that's going to uh, add a new tag for a given user ID. So I'm going to go to uh, my API. I'm going to create a little silly one here, uh, create add an API endpoint, and we're just going to do a stole start from scratch, and we're going to call it, you know, add a tag of type post because we're setting things so semantically that makes a little more sense not that it matters we're only going to use this and stop in the run and debug context uh we will make this uh just for fun here we're going to make this an authenticated endpoint uh that way it'll go with the user table uh and we will say by way of inputs uh, that we will say, all right, there's a tag, right? And you're only going to uh, work if you have added the tag, and if you're a user and you don't already have this tag, right? So the first way we can do this is we can just do a database request. We're going to, you know, add a record, add a record to the dupe te check table, right? And we're going to say that my user ID is equal to my auth. ID. Yeah, good. And that my tag is going to be equal to whatever the tag I put in. We're going to ignore tag two for a minute. Now, what this will do is if I were to do a run and debug here and the auth token were for Ray, and I were to say I want to do this for Delta, 
it will run just fine. Um, and in fact, if I were to say, let's just open link a new tab, uh, which is actually a good technique uh, when you're working with databases or have database one tab, have your you know function stack in another. Uh, we go over to dupe check and we can see Delta now exists for a raw, right? But if I were then say, well, let's now do alpha, right? We know that alpha would be a duplicate. We rerun, Merp, right? It doesn't like it. It will 500 error out on account of uh, the duplicate record being uh, detected. This is a pretty gross way of doing it, but it gets the job done. And if what I wanted was to, you know, have a little bit more of a nuance around how uh, this will represent its error, uh, then what I can do is uh, wrap it in an if condition. Actually, no, uh, sorry. Uh, let's uh, get rid of that. Yeah. I've wrapped this in a try catch, uh, which is under utility functions. Let me go to try catch. Uh huh. And we'll say, say, fine. And we'll uh, put the ad record into here. So that way, when it errors out, it can just have something that's supposed to do. And the catch can be that it will, um, you know, return a very specific value, right? And we'll just say uh, utility functions uh, and we'll say return, which skips the response at the bottom. And we'll just say have return, uh, we'll have return nothing, you know, in that case. So now what I can do is if that happens and I rerun it, see, it just returns absolutely nothing at all. It returns a null. Uh, whereas if I were to say uh, add in etta, you know, it will add etta for me. Okay, so now we have a little technique where it doesn't just bomb out, right? We can combine it. We can combine a try catch with an add record to be able to just get control over um, how to use it with a unique index like we did at the beginning. But let's just say for the sake of argument, we didn't want to have unique index. Maybe there's just some dirt in the data or, or you know, other reasons why we don't want to enforce that at the database level because that's just too restricted. But we do want to make sure we don't make more of a mess going forward. Let's uh, let's close up that try catch and let's make something new. Uh, and this new thing is going to be we're going to first just ask does it already exist, right? So we're going to do a uh, a database request and we're going to go look for ordinarily we'd look for has record, but we actually want to look on. But you'll see that using that test, if I go to dupe check, you'll only look for a thing where it matches that one field value, but that's not what we're up to here, right? We're up to looking for where it matches two field values, intersect of user ID and the tag two. So the has record is not going to do the job for us, although it's very convenient for simple cases. Um, but for interesting cases like this, we go to the power tool in Xano, uh, which is going to be query all records. We go over to dupe check and we're just going to say, give me everything where the user ID, right? Equals my auth ID. And, and the, um, uh, the tag two is equal to the tag that I'm putting in. Now this will give me a list of records that will match all that. And that, that might be more information we're really looking to pull over the transom. So I can actually make this a little bit simpler. I can go over to where it says output and I can click the pencil here and change this from return type list to return type exists. And that will make it just a Boolean. It's like, it's like the complicated version of has record. It will return a true if it found something and a false if it didn't. I'll say save here. And then I'll say, um, so I query all records and do check. Uh, and if I rerun this, it will say that there is nothing in there, right? Nothing in tag two for Ray uh, that goes with, well, tag of Etta. Uh, so uh, let's see. Oh, it equals db to check dot tag. That was a mistake on my part. Uh, so what you want to do is check for the input of tag. Great. So the dupe. So we're going to check in the table tag two equals the input tag. And if that were true, yeah, this should be true, right? Because I know that for Ray I added gamma, and for Ray I added eta, right? But whereas James has gamma, but James doesn't have eta. So if I were to go and say, well, instead of looking at this guy, I want to take a look at James, right? James with that same edit would be false. So now that I've got this true false thing going here, uh, I can test it and do data manipulation and do an if then statement and say um, in the event uh, that the dupe check one, which I know by the way, that's going to be true or false, uh, is equal to true, right? Boolean.
Boolean true. If dupe check one is true, uh, then we're just going to skip, right? Just like we talked about before. We do a um, you know, utility function return, and we'll just say return null, right, in that case. Otherwise, we're going to say um, database requests. We're going to add a record uh, for to dupe check uh, with all of this good stuff. Not with tag. We're not going to add to tag, please. We're going to add to tag two the tag input. And the user ID here is going to be from auth, the ID of the user. Cool. So now we have the idea that this is going to be returning dupe check two. Um, and because, uh, because I know at the bottom it wants to return dupe check one, I'm just going to rename this variable to dupe check one output and call that dupe check one. Right, so that way it will add the record and then it'll give me back the answer of what I just returned. Right, so if I'm James and I do a rerun, it'll tell me I can add Etta. And if I do another rerun, it'll tell me null because it's already added Etta. Right, so I can just fire off as James as many Ettas as I want. And you'll find over here that, you know, James has his Etta but only gets one Etta. Okay, these become the two major techniques you can use to prevent duplicates. The first is going to be when you use the index, uh, use the unique index technique and do it across multiple fields, uh, which is the simplest technique when you have high control over the data. And when you have less control over the data, and let's face it, that happens more than we might like to admit, uh, we can just compose either this uh, try catch approach. Uh, we, we, we can we just compose together a, a query all records plus an add record in order to solve that problem. Uh, and even if you do use unique, you don't just want things to error out. And that's why you compose things with a try catch like you see up here. All right. So this was a very small one, but it is a tricky thing when it comes to dealing with data that is going to be multidimensional and making sure that you just have that one pivot point uh, per pair or per set of data points. And whenever you're thinking, hey, I've got, I'm looking at the intersect of multiples of these fields, you can either just apply a unique index across multiple fields, as many as you want, or you can take the approach of uh, doing the check using querying all uh, before you actually proceed with what you're going to do next. Next. All right. Hope you found that helpful. If you have questions about this, uh, you know, drop them into the comments below and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.